Welcome into another episode of the Swamp 247 podcast. If you think that we're wearing the same clothing as the uh, as, as a different preview on the YouTube page, that's because we are two podcasts one day. My name is Jacob Rudder alongside Swamp 247 staff writer Graham Hall. Graham, we're back at it. This time we're talking about special teams, the game changers, punter, kicker, long snapper, and returners. Billy Napier changes the name of the unit to game changers. Uh, it's been a positively received change by the members of the unit. They think it makes uh, it makes a difference in terms of how they are perceived. Uh, tell me what the, the the Gators have going for them uh, at special teams, Graham. They've got a good punter, battle at kicker, uh, and some question marks in other places. Yeah, you know, I like to see that Billy Napier has pointed out how huge that unit can actually be for the in-game aspect of the team and giving them kind of a name that, lives up to that you know they should be put on a pedestal guys that can decide games i mean florida fans don't need to look far back to look at missed field goals or what could have happened in the special teams game when it comes to why the unit is so important and we've seen recent guys who have lived up to that i mean you mentioned jeremy crawshaw some stability at punter there but also we've seen some fantastic kickers that have come through the program recently eddie pinheiro and, of course, Evan McPherson, two guys who have been in the NFL or are still in the NFL and have had a lot of success after their Florida careers and while they were in Gainesville. While I think that a lot of people are kind of hoping Florida has found their next Evan McPherson at kicker, we have seen some signs throughout the spring and, and now into fall camp that that's not really the case right now. Let's start with Chris Howard, who during the spring game missed a kick and a 31-yard attempt and that kind of prefaced his exit from Gainesville. And he hit the transfer portal not soon after that, ended up going to Memphis. And it kind of left Florida with two options in Adam Mahalik, who had an impressive spring game. And then the incoming guy who has one of the best names, I got to be honest, get him an NIL deal in Trey Smack. I think a lot of people expected the latter Smack to come in here and win this job. And, uh, that really hasn't necessarily been the case from what we've heard, although we will, I think, get maybe a further indication of where the unit is at within the coming days as Florida. We record this, as you mentioned, Jacob, on August 27th. As Florida begins their week of game prep, I think we should get a little bit more clarity regarding who's going to be out there attempting field goals and extra points for the Gators this season. Sure, and I also think that you know one thing I'll point out is that Billy Napier did actually say that the kicking competition, as well as several other positions that are kind of up for grabs. Uh, th those could be competitions into the season. I think that he is is the kind of coach where nothing is set in stone. I think that you have to earn uh, your role within Billy Napier's system on a weekly basis. So it's not one of those things where it's like you perform well in the in the preseason and the weeks leading up to the season. It means you're automatically the number one at that position. I don't think that's the case at all with Billy Napier. I think that he's the kind of guy uh, who really does evaluate things like practice performance and contributions during meetings and off field, you know, interactions and behavior. Uh, obviously game performance is a factor. I can see that all being a factor for, for who will take field goals uh, on a weekly basis for the Gators. As you said, uh, Adam Mahalik had a very impressive uh, spring game showing he hit two long field goals. Trey Smack, a highly regarded freshman. Uh, one place where there is no competition though within Florida special teams unit is at punter. Uh, Australian kick uh, punter, excuse me, Jeremy Crawshaw, returning to Gainesville. Uh, this is a guy who, you know, you, you want to talk about game changers. This is a guy who has seemingly emerged as, as a clubhouse figure. Uh, I think there are people from outside his unit that actually look to Jeremy Crawshaw as, as a team leader, somebody who really is making an impact uh, with his voice and with his character. And then obviously this is a very good punter. He was a guy who was recognized for his accomplishments last year. Uh, this is somebody I think who could really make a difference in terms of his ability to flip a field uh, for the Gators. What what do what what advantages come with having a punter of that category? I think it's easy to dismiss the position, uh, and people don't really notice it until it becomes a problem. But I would say that this is kind of actually an area of strength where Florida brings back a player who who can make an impact, and, and you know they've seen him be successful. Yeah, some st stability I think is the biggest thing right there. You don't really have a guy that you're concerned is going to go out there and shank some punts. So you maybe want to leave your offense on the field on, on fourth and short. You you know this guy is going to pin the other team deep. And, and I think that Florida's defense, the consensus right now, is that maybe the defense a little bit ahead of the offense right now and that there may right now be a little more trust 
for the defense to kind of go and take advantage of the situations that Crawshaw could present for Florida. We saw him pin a lot of punts, like I said, inside the 20. And his the arc on his punts, obviously, I think is the, the biggest factor. It gives Florida a chance to get downfield and down some of those within the 10-yard line. If he can do that consistently this season and continue improving, everything else will just absolutely be a bonus. And I think that there are a lot of bonuses that we can kind of unpack here right now. You mentioned the leadership aspect with him coming back, being a respected voice within the program. That's going to help everyone else around him from the aforementioned Adam Mahalik to Trace Mack. I mean, those guys are going to benefit from seeing how Crawshaw prepares day in, day out, and seeing that this is a guy who immediately wasn't counted on as a freshman, you know, a guy who came in from Australia, rugby background. I got to mention that because it's going to be relevant here in a second. But a guy who came in and, you know, he didn't make an instant impact. He was allowed to learn throughout COVID and really become the guy for Florida going into 2021. And as we saw, he, he really has embraced that and gotten even better this season um, throughout the spring and, and in the fall camp. And one more thing I got to mention here, this is someone that, based on how he started, not as a punter from an early, early age, but as someone who played rugby in Australia, we know that he can take off and run. Florida fans saw that just one time last year when he was used in a fake punt situation. And I guess Dan Mullen decided that that was just enough and that they wouldn't try it again all year. You have a guy who could down people consistently and also rattle off nearly 30 yard punts with his legs. I mean, or fake punts with his legs, excuse me. You have to, I think, take advantage of even threatening to do that every situation so you can give a guy uh, a better chance to not allow the other team to have a return. If they can continue to maximize that this season, how to use Crawshaw, and he continues his improvement, I have no doubt that that's going to be a strength for Florida um, all season long. Absolutely, and I think that, you know, there have been questions, and, I, I, you know, this, this here, here's the big thing for me when it comes to special teams. I think that it ties back uh, fairly significantly to other areas that you and I have discussed about this team over the last couple of weeks. And for example, I think that there are very reasonable question marks about Florida's offense entering this season. You have a guy like Anthony Richardson, who is a tremendously talented quarterback, but there are questions about the weapons he has at his disposal. I think Florida has a really strong running back room, uh, but you would be fair to, to wonder what's going to go on with Florida's receivers. Who's going to step up and be, you know, a primary target for a guy like Anthony Richardson. I think the same can be said about Florida's tight ends. Dante Zanders is a guy who's going to lead that room, and he hasn't played tight end in several years. So uh, th there are there are reasonable questions about who Anthony Richardson is going to be able to target. And why does that matter in this podcast about special teams? Well, when you have a guy like Jeremy Crawshaw, if your offense doesn't get into rhythm in a given game, you do have an opportunity to make things difficult with your opponent with a guy like Crawshaw on the fold who can flip the field, uh, who is a, a solid precision punter, uh, who knows how to get a, a football into a situation where it's downable by his gunners. That matters a whole bunch, especially in a season where you will have an offense that's trying to learn a new system. You do have some question mark positions uh, in, in terms of your skill position players and what they're going to be able to do with a young and inexperienced quarterback. So uh, th these are things that really do matter. I think that Florida's in a good position uh, in that regard. I will, for the sake of not leaving this position out, because again, I game changers. It's important. Uh, let's talk long snapper for a second here, Graham. Who who can fans expect to start at the position? Uh, why is it something that, that fans should be paying attention to? Uh, obviously, everything matters, but, but why particularly this and who should fans expect? Some more stability. You know, Marco Ortiz, a guy who had the job last year, even got placed on scholarship after the Tennessee game last year. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was your guy all year long if it weren't for the guy behind him and Rocco Underwood, who is incredibly capable as well in his own right. Another guy that was on scholarship for Florida. I think that you, you're not really going to have competition right there, but they are going to set Rocco up for a future of that, at that position, knowing that this is Ortiz's last year, but you have another guy in Ortiz who, while maybe not like the most vocal guy has just led consistently by example, he's got a twin brother, who has spent some time in the NFL as a long snapper as well. His dad played tight end and long snapper at uh, University of Texas of Arlington before that program was closed. And he just comes from a, a background of people who know what it takes day in and day out. So at long snap, snapper, you uh, have a, a guy in Ortiz that 
is going to be what looks like your consistent starter all season long, just as he was last year. But it, Rocco Underwood, I think that they have to start using him too. Absolutely. Uh, let, let's move on to a position where there is a ton of competition. That is that that is the return role for Florida. I think that that's been one of the things uh, that that flew under the radar a little bit throughout Florida's fall camp. Uh, just because, again, I think that you know the frequency with which you need to use somebody in this role kind of allows it to be a position that gets forgotten somewhat easily. But but again, I you know I go back to the fact that it is uh, incredibly important to have a reliable person returning punts and kicks. Do do you know? Can we say confidently who we think is going to be back to return the you know Florida's first kickoff of the season? Do we know? who's going to be out on the field to return Florida's first punt return of the season. I personally can't say that we we can confidently comment on that. I am curious what you think, and then let's get into maybe with both of us, we'll, we'll offer some predictions uh, about who lines up in those spots. I'm a little more confident with punt return right now than I am with kick return. I know that dating back to six days ago, Billy Napier did say, that Florida was going to use freshman Trevor Etienne in the return game. Jacob, you wrote about that on Swamp 247. We have plenty of coverage of how Florida has used returners since Napier got on campus, whether it was in the kick game with Demarcus Bowman and uh, a few other guys as well that you, you've seen who either are no longer guys who are getting time there or they may not be on campus, like Bowman. Fenley Graham is another guy that comes to, to mind as well as a return option for Florida. A lot of people thought that he – the former Lakeland standout would have a chance. Florida's coaching staff had talked about that throughout the spring as well, how he was moved to wide receiver and was being used in the return game. So two guys that we saw in the spring now no longer on campus. We only have the comments to go off of rather than in-game uh, footage and viewing necessarily. So if you take Napier at his word right now, really it is just Trevor Etienne that we have heard about who is going to be used there. I don't think we can come out and confidently say, like you said, that we know – who's going to be out there against the Utes on September 3rd. The big thing for me is punt return. I think Xavier Henderson, having seen him used in the role last year, I would just think it's reasonable to assume that he has a leg up on the competition from everyone else around him when it comes to punt return. A former track guy who competed throughout high school. We saw CJ Henderson, his brother now with the Carolina Panthers, who was used in the return game as well at Florida, just experience, sure hands, and speed. And then you factor in that even going back to the spring game, we saw him fielding punts as well. I think that that guy has a very good chance to be Florida's main punt returner this season, but we haven't been given any recent updates that would indicate that that's still the case. And we haven't heard about any guys who could be a surprise back there to receive a punt against the Utes when the thing actually kicks off. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll throw a couple more names that, that I've heard uh, in return roles. And, and this, I'm going to just keep it broad. Uh, this is both punt and kick. I, I, I over the course of fall camp, uh, Xavier Henderson was a guy who I heard who you mentioned uh, Ricky Pierce saw before he suffered a bone bruise that, that basically took him out for the majority of Florida's fall camp. Uh, he was returning kicks and punts. Uh, he is a guy who I actually personally think would, would do great. Uh, in that role, having watched him play uh, for a couple years. Uh, Jason Marshall is a name who I heard uh, back there returning punts and kicks, although I'm not sure if that really continued. Jason Marshall is another guy who was dealing with a minor injury uh, that, that Florida kept him away from the field for precautionary reasons as a result of. Uh, and the newcomer, Ty Bowman, uh, out there returning some kicks and punts. You and I saw him. We've commented on it. Uh, some, some solid speed. Uh, Naquan Wright is another guy who who is returning I actually think this is going to be my bold special teams prediction. Uh, I think Naquan Wright has a really good shot to return punts. I think he's a reliable guy. I think that Florida staff has gotten to a point very quickly with him where they can trust that he's going to do what they ask of him. Uh, and punt returner is a role where that's really important. If you need a guy who's going to go out there and be sure-handed, who's going to follow instructions, uh, who isn't going to try and do too much, I think you can, you can use somebody who you trust in that kind of a role. Uh, it might not be the flashiest thing. I don't necessarily think that Florida's putting him back there with the expectation that he turns into Ted Ginn or you know one uh, uh, some some all time great punt returner. But I do think that they could use a reliable face uh, at least at the outset of the season in that role. And then I'll go to the other running back. I think Trevor Etienne is probably my prediction to return kicks. Uh, just a guy who seemingly has made a name for himself in Florida's fall camp. Did you did you want to give specific predictions for for your your punt and kick returners? Let's hear what you got. 
that's tough, man. I would definitely say that I think Trevor Etienne has a very good shot of being used back there. And the reason I say that is because I just am a skeptic when it comes to thinking that a primary running back is going to be used in the return game. I don't know if if I'm alone in that thinking, but maybe my disposition is one that it's kind of tough to risk a guy like that that you're counting on. If Florida didn't have so much depth at running back, I, I don't think that they would take that risk where they felt like they could afford to put a guy like that back there. But when you talk about guys who have the ability to see the field and evade tacklers and also are trained day in and day out of making sure that they protect the football, you would think that running back is one of the first positions, if not the first position that comes to mind. So it obviously makes a whole lot of sense that we are hearing two guys and saw a guy in Demarcus Bowman be used at, at kick return in the spring game. So I would think right there that that thinking should change for people because they've already done it right there. With Nacon, Naquan's injury history and everything he's kind of been dealing with, I don't know if he's going to be the guy, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being the guy right now, just knowing what we know. Absolutely. Well, you uh, you have the special teams uh, breakdown from Swamp 247 uh, right there. That's going to do it for this episode of the Swamp 247 season preview series where we're going through each and every position group, uh, previewing what each group has and what it does not. Uh, that now brings our total to four, though. We've done uh, quarterback. We've done running back. We've done tight end. We've done game changers. We've got more to go. Uh, and so my advice would be keep it locked on the Swamp 247 YouTube page where we're posting every single one of these podcasts, as well as our podcast platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, plenty others. Uh, pretty much anywhere you get your audio version of the podcast, we are there. Uh, and then again, you know, keep it locked on the site. Every single one of these previews comes with a written article where we go into even more depth, uh, give you a little depth chart look at the end of those. And we have plenty more written content coming as Florida gets ready for its first matchup of the season. We are one week away as of the recording of this podcast, one week and a couple hours, uh, September 3rd, 7 o'clock. Florida takes on Utah in the swamp. Uh, we will be there for that. But until then, we're going to see you next time. For Graham Hall, my name is Jacob Rudner. Thanks for listening.